chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE. I thought I should make a video about this. Um, I just watched, so I've already known a lot about it. I've done a school project about it, a whole video I presented to my health class. Um, I just watched Seau, which is a 30 for 30 ESPN film documentary about Junior Seau, a former middle linebacker for the uh, Miami Dolphins, San Diego Chargers, and New England Patriots that died due to suicide in 2012 and was diagnosed with CTE, um, even though he was in his 40s. So I want to do more videos about opinion and not just stats and like things in sports besides stats and thought this deserved its own video, and I feel like this will be my best video because I'm gonna put a lot of work into it and try to actually put some pictures and editing. So let's get right into it. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, it's a neurodegenerative disease uh, linked to repeated trauma to the head, many blows. It's usually found because of contact sports like football, ice hockey, ice hockey, boxing, rugby, soccer sometimes, even semi-contact sports like basketball and baseball, um, military explosions and just the head making the head go forward and back and the blood going forward and back. Um, and there's so many, I'm gonna go over some of the symptoms right now. So first there's four stages. First stage symptoms can include confusion, disorientation, dizziness, and headaches. Second stage, memory loss, social instability, impulsive behavior, poor judgment. Third and fourth, progressive dementia, movement disorders, speech impediments like trouble speaking, making sentences, sensory processing disorders, tremors, vertigo, deafness, depression, and, depression, and suicidality. Additional symptoms are other like movement things, amnesia, um, and it's similar to Parkinson's and um, Alzheimer's sometimes. And it just, I love football, but it's so hard with this thing. It makes it so hard to love football and want to play football. Um, some names, Mike Webster, Vincent Jackson, Aaron Hernandez, Chris Henry, Junior Seau, Terry Long, Andre Waters, Justin Stro, I forget how to say the name, Strelzik, Strelzik. One of just a couple of a few many former and dead NFL players that were diagnosed with CTE. It is only diagnosed at autopsy, but a lot of current NFL players have it. There was a study done where they looked at old brains um, of former football players. And I think it was 99% of former NFL brains that were looked at had CTE. Like 88 percent or something Canadian Football League, 91 percent of college football players, 21 or 20 something percent of high school players. It's crazy and it destroys people's lives with all these crazy things. So I want to go th over some of the people. Mike Webster was the original person that was diagnosed in. I guess I'll talk about Bennett Amalu first before I get into all this. Bennett Amalu, did I close the tab? I close the tab on him, but um, I already know a little bit about him. So Ben Amalo was a, is a Nigerian American um, physician basically, and he worked at a coroner's office in Pittsburgh. Mike Webster died at a heart attack in 2002 at the age of 50. And so basically Ben Amalo did his autopsy. This is all shown in the tr movie Concussion 2015 with Will Smith. Will Smith playing Ben Amalu. And so he looked at his brain and he noticed all uh, these cracks and how degenerated it was, like as if he was a super old dude, even though he was only 50, and he died of a heart attack. And now he's really become a symbol for head injuries in the NFL, Mike Webster, because this I'll go over. Um, so he played during kind of the Terry Bradshaw time, four time and a Super Bowl champion. Let me find right here. Okay, yeah. So this is portrayed in the movie. He lived out of his pickup truck and train stations. He had amnesia, dementia, depression. Obviously, CD wasn't a known thing at this time, so people didn't know about it. He was a center, which is one of the most scary positions in the NFL because every snap, multiple snaps, every game, your head-on-head -head contact, 
or just contact in general every single play. I could not imagine playing O-line or D-line. Um, living out of his truck, Terry Bradshaw, his quarterback, paying for his expenses a lot. He had such trouble going to sleep that he would shock himself with electroshock weapons like tasers just to go to sleep, which caused his heart attack. After death, he was diagnosed with chronic traumatic encephalopathy by Bennett Amamalu. He was the first former NFL player diagnosed with it. Um, and Ben Amalu looked at his and eight other NFL players and saw they all had the kind of the same brain damage shown in people with Alzheimer's and dementia and like retired boxers. Um, talk a little bit about Ben Amalu. So yeah, Nigerian American physician, forensic pathologist, and neuropathologist who was the first to discover and publish findings on CTE in American football players while working at the Allegheny County Coroner's Office in Pittsburgh. He later became the medical examiner for San Joaquin County, California, and was a professor at the University of California, Davis. Um, but so he looked at some other brains, which I'll talk about right now. One of them was, um, there's Chris Henry. This one is crazy. He died at the age of um, 26. He didn't die exactly because of CTE. He fell out the back of a moving truck that his fiance was driving and he died. Uh, no alcohol, no crazy things, no evidence that the fiance was driving recklessly or excess speed. So death, a total accident, looked at his brain and he had CTE at the age of 26. This was the first time that a still active NFL player, NFL player playing in the NFL at the time of his death was diagnosed and already had CTE at the age of 26. That means he played in the NFL from, yeah, he died in 2009, he was 26, played in the NFL from 2005 to nine for about four years. So he played in college, high school. So about 12 years of playing football, at least probably played Pop Warner as well, already had CTE. Um, let me talk, I'm thinking Andre Waters next year. He was a big guy in it. I'll talk about the actual disease itself at the end. I just want to mention some of these guys so you can really see. I've talked to some people about this. Some people are so arrogant and it makes me so mad. Some people I even that I know think all this is BS basically. Like, bro, you're no offense, stupid. Like football could be doomed because the NFL ain't really doing much to stop this crap. And it's such a violent game. I, I love football. It's my favorite sport. I want to play. I want to be a corner in high school. I'm an incoming freshman. That's I pick corner because that's probably one of the more safe positions. Obviously, nothing is safe, but I don't plan to play in college. I don't think I'll be good enough to play in college. So I think I am a little more safer to all this stuff. But um, yeah, Andre Waters. He died by suicide on November 20th, 2006. Discovered by his girlfriend at his home in Tampa, Florida. Um, he had, I don't remember what, it doesn't say what stage he had, but they, Al Amalu looked at his brain and found that it degenerated into that of an 80 year old man with Alzheimer's disease. An 80 year old man with Alzheimer's. And he had depression and shot himself in the head, all that. Literally just wanting to kill themselves because they want that feeling out of them. They don't want all that crazy crap that destroys their lives, which will now take me, I'm jumping all over the place on timeline. I'm going with Junior Seau since I just watched this and this made me so sad. He committed suicide by shooting himself in the chest in 2012 at the age of 43. He was diagnosed with chronic traumatic encephalopathy and um, he was an amazing dude. It was showed in the documentary. Four kids, a wife, they divorced in 2002, but, um, Really amazing man. He's American Samoan, so kind of the Samoans like that tight knit family, um, respecting your family, not embarrassed, like honoring the family name. Really amazing dude. Then slowly just becomes not the same person, and um, he even he failed. He tried to drive a drive off a cliff and did not uh, didn't kill himself. Like he was trying to, but he didn't succeed. And then it was not too long later that he shot himself and his girlfriend found him. Um, 
mo someone you would never believe to kill himself, like his personality. And it just shows that no one's safe with football. Um, he was a linebacker, Hall of Famer, really good, very passionate about the game. Um, I'll try to find some more at the bottom. Yeah, he left no suicide note, but he, it was just crazy to everyone because he was a legend of San Diego and it did not make sense that someone like him would kill himself. Um, but it's really just all on how the NFL isn't really doing anything about this. They say they're fixing the helmets. How do we know they're making the helmets better? They're not showing us. Yeah, sure, they make some rules like targeting, more rules, more helmets, more gear. And just, yeah, of course, tackling is part of the game. That's what this one guy said to me. Is like, oh, tackling is part of the game. Yeah, I get that. But we can freaking lay off of the Antonio Brown, what is, uh, what's his name, Vionte Perfect or whatever, who, like, hits him in the helmet ever since Antonio Brown's never been the same. All this controversy, all this weird crap, like playing for the Raiders and then not wanting to play because the helmet, he didn't like the helmet type or accidentally like doing chirotherapy and staying too long and freezing his toes or something. And he definitely has CTE. So all these guys, Aaron Hernandez, perfect example. He killed him, hung himself in prison after he killed, he was convict, um, he was charged with a double homicide in 2012 found innocent they don't really know if he was innocent but he was found guilty of illegal possession of a handgun and then he did i think he definitely in 2013 the miami shooting of alexander bradley former friend and i definitely think he shot him there and then the murder of odin Flo lloyd who was a friend of his found with multiple gunshot wounds to the back and chest about a mile from hernandez's house Hernandez was found guilty, um, prison, and then killed himself, and made him go crazy, and guess his age. He was 27, and he killed himself, and killed a dude, and shot another dude, and was basically involved in the murder of two other people at the age of 27, and he had stage four CTE, I believe. So this stuff's crazy. Uh, another example, Vincent Jackson, who just died last year at the age of 40 due to chronic alcohol use, which was due to his depression with CTE. I think he had stage two CTE, uh, former NFL wide receiver. It's crazy. It, oh, okay. And this is okay, not even including another two dudes. So the Justin dude, who is an offensive tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he uh, was a in a car accident, he was going like 90 miles per hour or whatever. Um, this was portrayed in the movie too. And he was like, again, he was going against the flow of ta traffic to avoid the New York State Police after a 40 mile chase along the New York State Thruway. So 36 years old and tank truck hit him. Driving 90 miles per hour. It's obvious and he wasn't under the influence of alcohol. He literally just had so much messed up with him because of brain damage. Um, finally, Terry Long was another guy. He drank a full gallon of antifreeze, ruled his um, suicide, uh, diagnosed in CTE, one of the first people that um, Ben Amalu diagnosed. So that's, that's all the players. But so right now I, I'll show a picture. Maybe not, but I'll, I'll try to edit it in, see if I can find the timing. Right here, putting my hand up so I find an ending later. Um, a normal brain and van like a CTE brain, it's crazy how much it degenerates the brain and um, literally how these dudes can be compared to 80 year olds with Alzheimer's and the, some of them are 26, 27, 40, 50, 45, it's crazy. So to, this was basically just all this trying to inform people. If you didn't already know, it's not a new subject, but I think it will be a subject for many, many years to come. And this could be the doom of football and more football than, I mean, even though ice hockey is really violent, not as many head things, more just body, but yeah, a lot of it's going down the drain. Parents not letting their parents go. There's so many kids in my school that would be so good at football, but they can't play because their parents won't let them. And I'm, like, 
yeah, parents, you're right. You probably shouldn't be letting them play football. I probably should not be playing football. And um, and they're bigger than me, and they could be way better than I could be, but their parents won't let them. And I'm like, good for them that their parents at least know like how bad this can be. And this could be then because there's so many parents that are seeing this now, as of now, that like, then you're not gonna have as many people to play these sports. So I think there needs to be way more rules put in place. Obviously, you can't take out football. That's a part of the game. I mean, you can't take out tackling. That's a part of the game. But make it like huge fines. Make where people don't want to hit hard, don't want helmet to helmet contact. Because do we really want more murderers, more serial killers, more suicides, more assault, more all this crazy crap? Family members losing their loved ones and. Um, them going crazy, not even, not assaulting people, being depressed and being rude and like all this crazy stuff. So, and there's no cure for CTE. So I think that's really, I probably have exceeded 15 minutes at this point. I don't even know how long I was going for, but um, yeah, it's a crazy ass thing and we need to step up on that situation. If you deny, and the NFL denied that CT was a thing eventually, or initially, like Roger Goodell, the commissioner, which is why Roger Goodell is one of my least favorite people in sports. I don't like him at all um, because they were denying it. They, bro, you can't deny science. The science is what you cannot deny science. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. But bro, if you don't see this and you're denying it, go get educated. You probably hit your head while you're in kindergarten. Peace out.